we have worked with each other for a couple of years, mm -hmm. uh, but I always wanted to know what your process was before an interview because you guys pretty much live and breathe hockey. So to me, you're always around it. Do you really need to do as much research with these guys or is it just like you're just talking to your friends almost? I do. I think you do too. Yeah. I think whenever we have uh, an interview, I think it's your responsibility to try to answer one question and that is, can you tell me something I didn't know? Yeah. And the best way to do that is you talk to people around that person you're interviewing's orbit. So you call ex-teammates, or you call ex-coaches, or friends, or people that have had some passing with that hockey player, just to try to find a story that nobody else knows and get that player to react to it. That's my thought on it. I think there's a danger of doing too much prep and too little prep. Like sometimes I do think I overthink it. Um, I know that some of the worst interviews I, I've had is when I kind of think, okay, I have to come up with a genius question every question. Sometimes the best interviews are the simplest questions. I think it comes down to it's better to be overprepared than underprepared, but it's also very important to see how your guest reacts to your questions. If they're really into what you're doing with them, You've got to keep going along that line. If they're not, you better have something else. Well, one thing I want to add to that too is what I find is the best follow-up question you can ask is a tough one for people that are asking questions because you have to really swallow your own ego to make it work. And that question is, what do you mean by that? Yeah. Because you're putting yourself in a position that I don't really understand that. And we're all arrogant, you know, Elliot and I want to pretend that we understand everything, but yep. the, the best thing you can do, and I always tell students this, the best thing you can do is say, what do you mean by that? Or how do you, how do you arrive at that? Mm -hmm. um, because it puts the person that you're talking to in a position where he or she thinks that they haven't done their job giving a good answer and they tend to go further than they intended because they feel the answer they're giving isn't sufficient. But again, you really have to swallow your ego and say, what do you mean by that? I don't understand. Way to spill the secret. Now everybody's <laughs> going to climb up. Uh, you guys have worked together for so long. When you are in an interview, and I noticed this watching you guys for so long, um, there might be a question, Jeff, that you want to ask, where I know Elliot might want to ask a certain question that he needs to. How do you juggle that? And do you guys talk beforehand? Uh, maybe you know what the other guy's going to ask. Like, how does that process work? Almost, I get, I get the highs. Never. I get the Heisman from Elliot sometimes. <laughs> but when he wants to continue on one line, he'll just like shoot out a finger, like, "Hey, stand down. I'm taking the ball here." Yeah, you know, I I think there's a, a good feel. I like we almost never talk about questions beforehand, right? Never. No, never. I I can't remember too many times, mm -hmm. if ever, that we have. I I do like that. I think generally, I think people who listen to the podcast know that Jeff and I tend to approach things very differently so i always assume that he's going to come up with something that i will never have thought of and some and a lot of the time i think it's very good sometimes i think it's really terrible but most hey. of the time i think it's <laughs> it's really good um but uh, so almost never before the interviews during i think it just goes to flow like sometimes i can just look at jeff and i can see he wants to ask something yeah. or sometimes I hear a pause nobody's going so I'm, I think I better jump in we do step on each other occasionally the one thing I'm very conscious about though is that I don't think anybody should monopolize an interview unless there's good reason to do it there are physical cues that we give each other that I think we're used yeah. to like I mentioned like Elliot will like shoot a finger or just something casual with his hands like hang on I want to I grab a follow-up here um, my go-to has always been I'll like lean forward a little bit and, I, and Elliot usually picks up on okay Merrick seems particularly interested in this point of conversation we'll give the baby his bottle and let him do a follow-up <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay hot seat favorite interview I'm gonna go with the last year because you guys have done so many oh the that's that's a that's a great question like honestly Nick like I almost never look back at them yeah. I always like Yep. It's done. It's over. If it was great, celebrate it. If it wasn't, figure out what went wrong and, and fix it. Is Jack that... Hughes. Jack Hughes Jack is really Hughes good. Is, but, I mean, Jack Hughes yeah. is always good. We've talked to Hughes a couple times. He's always phenomenal. You know, if I can extend that boundary more than one year, maybe like a, a, a year and a half, mm -hmm. Pierre Edward Belmar, when yeah. we were in Paris for the uh, European Players Tour, mm -hmm. I thought uh, he was exceptional. And I'll tell you, and if I can stretch it back even further, completely ignoring the, the parameters of <laughs> yeah. what you've given us to work with here. 
When we were in Chicago with the players tour, uh, cranky Alexander Ovechkin complaining that he, to this day, that he's not allowed to wear a tinted visor. I yeah. thought was, I'm forever fascinated mm-hmm. in the minutia of hockey like that. And cranky Ovechkin at that moment really, that, that, that found a home with me. You know, I, I would have to say, uh, honestly, Nick, that we're lucky that a lot of people are willing to do these with us. We've had a lot of people do it three and four times. Yeah. And, but I, I, again, I'll go back a bit longer. Some of the interviews I've really been happy with are some that were off the beaten path, right? You know, we did an interview with uh, Jamie Bozzo, and um, she works Great. for one of the agents, uh, Louis Gross. And what she does is, you know, she she's basically his fixer mm-hmm. in a lot of ways. And I remember when we did that interview, we got incredible reaction from people saying, that was different and that was really interesting and that's not what I was expecting and that's that's big for me I um, I've thought a lot actually over the we, we we had a day off from the podcast and um, we didn't do one last Christmas day and I've thought a lot about what we could do with it and, and make it better and I think that's one of the things I kind of want to go back to is who are the people that nobody's expecting I, I I think we're lucky with our audience in the sense that One of the greatest things I ever heard about Apple was that they didn't create what you needed. They created what they thought was good for you. Like nobody was thinking about the iPod and they created it and now nobody can live with what came without from it. I like when we find an interview and people are like, wow, I didn't know that I needed to hear that interview, but I liked it. That's what I want to get back to. Love that. Further to that? Yeah. The interview with Ryan Smith, future yes. NHL. Mm-hmm. That was a big one. Not just the interview itself. He was fantastic, mm-hmm. but getting him, I, yeah. it, I thought was, it's I huge. thought was excellent. And uh, Bill Foley, yep. uh, owner of the the Vegas Golden Knights. And <laughs> I, I knew it was kind of a gotcha question when I asked him if there was no salary cap, how much would you right. spend on your team? And I think he said like 180 million dollars. I'm sure that. <laughs> The NHL head office wasn't too thrilled about that answer, but nonetheless, I thought, I thought Foley, owners don't necessarily make themselves available a whole lot, <laughs> yeah. but I thought, I thought Foley was excellent. Awesome. Thanks for your time, guys. Thank Appreciate you, it. Nick. Happy to do it.